Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. Hope you're having a great day. My name is Gary. Welcome to Become the Music. And tonight, you may notice I am wearing what I call the shirt to end all shirts. That can only mean one thing, Fish. So, for those not familiar with the band Fish, they are my favorite band. They were formed 40 years ago this year in Vermont. And they are an improvisational group uh, with a lot of different influences, uh, psychedelic rock, um, hard rock, pop, bluegrass, funk, all kinds of stuff thrown into the stew. And uh, tonight is the um, 33rd anniversary of the release of their second studio album called Lawn Boy. This was my introduction to Studio Fish. So I came, I came across this band in a very odd way. I was backpacking through Europe in 1998 and um, I saw a poster in Switzerland that Fish was playing a European tour and I'd never heard the band. I'd heard of them. People said, this band is amazing, you gotta check them out. And so I saw they were playing in Prague. So I jumped a train, went to Prague, got a job in a youth hostel and all these Fish fans started piling in. Everyone's talking about this tour and this amazing band. I had no idea what to expect. I had not, no concept of what I was about to see. And uh, they played two nights in Prague. I saw both nights and it changed my life. So when I got back to Canada, I bought their live album called The Live One. That's the one they had at the time. And shortly after that, just to get a, like a sampling of what they're, you know, of all their material. And then I bought Lawn Boy, which is the album I'm diving into tonight on its anniversary. So um, a lot of really huge, epic fan favorites on this record. And we're going to dive into most of them tonight, starting with The Squirming Coil. And uh, one thing I should mention about Fish, especially older Fish, um, people hack on their lyrics a lot. And maybe deservedly so, not to me, because I think their lyrics are a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, don't look for meaning. I'll just say that right out. Don't look for meaning in early fish lyrics, because there really ain't any. What it was about was using the vocal melodies as a way to drive the song forward. And like a lot of songs that don't have a lot of meaning, the fans start to ascribe certain meanings to the to the lyrics. So. For us fish fans, the mean, the word the lyrics do have a lot of meaning, but only because we're fish fans. So this is more about uh, delving into their musicianship and the incredible prowess of Trey Anastasio as far as a composer. Um, they are very, very studied players. They are very learned in all forms of music and composition and structure and improvisation and all this kind of stuff. So I'm actually going to be doing live versions of these songs because most of them are fairly long songs. It's a little boring to just sit there and look at the album cover. So um, I've chosen various uh, versions of these songs. So the first one, The Squirming Coil, uh, this is from 1996, August 16th, The Clifford Ball, which was a festival that they put on, Fish puts on festivals every once in a while. They're actually doing one next year in Delaware. So look for me there. Anyways, I'm uh, going to dive into the squirming coil. So a big feature of this song that we all love so much is at the end of the song, the keyboardist, Paige McConnell, does a piano solo, and it's usually quite poignant and moving. There's been one version where the bass player, uh, Mike Gordon, does the solo piece instead. So what will happen is the band will play the song, uh, very interesting composed parts, long flowing, intricate things like that. And then they will leave the stage one by one to let Paige have his spotlight. So the Clifford Ball, I know this version quite well because I own the DVD. I love this version, so let's get it. <laughs> 